But let me let me shift gear. So I work with a lot of people in the IT services space. Mm-hmm. And many of them do not articulate anything special. You know, we provide great IT services is basically the message. Okay. Mm-hmm. So does a company have to have something special, something that really makes them stand out, or can they just tell stories that are, we provide great IT service? I mean, yes, you know, absolutely. You could, that could be your, your pitch, you know, and, and the proof is in the pudding, as they say. So once you start using our services, you'll see how great we are. The only issue with that is that there's a lot of other people that claim the same thing. And you could say this of any industry, right? Any service. And so if you do want to stand out and in order to differentiate yourself, it really helps and it makes a difference to have some kind, not some kind, a roster of success stories that can show me as a potential client what you've done for others successfully. And not, and I don't mean here was the challenge that we saw here's the solution we provided, but really put me in the shoes of those clients that you've helped before, because then I can make connections in my own mind. And when we're talking about IT services, I think it's really important to sort of have the end user in mind, right? So not just the client, but how did this change the, I mean, if you think of stories in general, they're about life-changing events. Those are the ones we gravitate towards, right? There's some kind of change. So you have to think about that change that you provided for clients. And once you've pinpointed what those changes are, then you can put that into a story that you tell to other potential clients. And it, it's, it seems like um, they get caught up in the technology side, whereas I'm constantly advising them to think about, you're really a business advisor. Mm. And you need to ask, like you brought up good questions, so that they talk about their business. You know, here's where we're hurting. This area is not profitable. This process takes too long, whatever it is. And then you can determine which of those are something that can be solved through the technology. But when you think about this before and after, where maybe a company was struggling to differentiate themselves, and then they were able to go through a process, and part of that process was coming up with a killer story. What, what's your favorite example that you've got there? You know, I, I worked with a big uh, health insurance company, and uh, they, this was uh, right when uh, the market was suddenly going to be open, um, you know, with the Affordable Care Act and all of that. And, and so all these companies that have been around this, in this case, more, more than 100 years, they, they went through a kind of rebranding, and, and they sort of realized that simply saying, we've been around for 100 years, trust us, that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> because there's a, you know, for every company that says that there's 10,000 bloggers that find examples of why that's not true. And so now it's a very different environment. And so they had come up with these great, you know, new branding attributes and the whole goal, and I'm using their jar- jargon here uh, purposefully, uh, is is to be more customer centric. And they were like, you know, we are customer centric. We, we think about our customers, but nobody knows that. And so he said, well, you have to prove that, right? And how do you prove that? You find the stories to prove it. And so we worked with them and we asked them, you know, where are the storytellers? Where are those stories that we can find that are going to prove this fact that you are customer centric? Because right now, I, I don't believe you. I have no reason to believe you. And they said, well, you know, we've got the, all these attributes, the branding, uh, who? <laughs> and they said, well, maybe the call centers, because they hear from our customers day in and day out. So maybe you should go there and see if we can find stories. And so we did. And there was one story that emerged, uh, and this guy's name was Jose, and he was in Visalia, California. And, and I asked him, so, so what's the experience? And he said, well, I got a phone call one day from a woman named Mona, and she said, my husband's crazy. And so immediately he said, well, I've got a list of therapists and all that who can help with that. And she said, no, no, it's not that kind of crazy. And she moves to another room and she said, you know, he's watching his football game. So I'm going to another room. Uh, he's crazy because he refuses to get this CPAP machine that's going to help him with his sleep apnea. And I'm really worried. And so the, Jose then says, well, you know, I happen to actually have sleep apnea and I use such a machine. So maybe I should talk to him and maybe I can convince him. And she says, well, he's watching his football game. He's not going to like it. But anyway, she shuffles through it. And as she's shuffling over there, she says, you know, there's something else you should know. 
Henry, my husband, his father died of cancer. And he, in his dying days, he was on a respirator. And I believe that that's why Henry doesn't want to have this, this CPAP machine, because it mm -hmm. reminds him of that respirator. And her yeah. said, okay. And then she said, here he is. <laughs> and so Henry gets on the phone now and Jose thinks on his feet and he says, you know, you're a football fan. And what, what, what game are you watching? He says, what's the Bears versus the Packers? And Jose says, oh, I'm a Bears fan. This is great. And Henry says, well, that's terrible because I'm a Packers fan. This is not a good way to start this <laughs> conversation. <laughs> exactly. But then he says, Jose tells Henry, look, you're a football fan. I am too. And I want to tell you about Reggie White, Football Hall of Famer, who died young in his 50s because of respiratory issues. If he'd had a machine like the one I use every day, by the way, for my sleep apnea, like you have, he would still be alive today. And so then they continue on this conversation. And finally, Henry says, you know, you've convinced me and I want to get back to my, to my game. I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do it on one condition. And, and Jose tells him, well, is it because of, of the price? Because you're fully covered. I can tell you that right now. He says, no, 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 no. I just need one thing for you to do. And he says, okay, I'll do anything. And he says, I need you to say right now, go pack, go and I'll get this machine. <laughs> and then Jose <laughs> took a beat and said, all right, I'll do it. Go pack, go. And so that's the, that's the story yeah. he told. And that story that I just told you now was on their internal channel, like a YouTube kind of channel. They've got, you know, more than 50,000 employees uh, all over. And, and it was their, their greatest in engagement initiative. And people told stories as a result of seeing that. And then it even became the subject of an advertising campaign for that health insurance company. Uh, you know, something they would have not found even with the best and brightest creative agencies, right? Uh, just because it had, it, it followed those values and it certainly showed you how customer centric this company is. Mm -hmm.